If you're looking for help with Airtable Forms, you have come to the right place. This video is going to be going into detail about the good and the bad of Airtable Forms. Airtable Forms are really great because they give you a quick and easy way to set up an ability for other people to enter data that will go directly into your database. But they don't have the full functionality of a standard form software. So understanding where these limitations are is really important for you when you sit down and start building your forms. So if that's of interest, Stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to get organized and automated in your business and in your life. So if that's of interest, swing by our website. I will include a link in the description of this video and learn how we do exactly that. But without further ado, let's just jump into the topic of this video, Airtable Forms. So really quickly, Taking a look at my screen here, you'll see that I have built an example database with two tables. I've got clients here and I have accounts receivable. What I'm imagining is that you've got a form where you are, where you're going to build a form that tracks your client data and tracks when you receive payments from those clients. So let's take a quick look at how this client information might work. I'll put myself as a guinea pig in this database. So again, this is uh, the form is going to be for recording those accounts receivable. So I'm not building a form for receiving the client data, although I could just as easily do that as well. But I'm, for the sake of this, just going to type in my information here and imagine that I were a client for this, uh, this particular database or, uh, yeah, a client. So I've filled out my first name, last name, and email, and then orders here, or, you know, this is, I should call this accounts receivable because that's the link. And let's see if I can spell. All right, there we go. So we've got our link to accounts receivable and we've, so we've set up our first client and that's great. Now let's take a look at our accounts receivable. So we've got a couple things working here and I brought in a lot of different data types for the example of this. So first and foremost, we've got an auto number and then we have a link to our client. Then we're gonna record the amount that was received. We're gonna record the date the payment was made the method of the payment, and then also if it was a check, we'll record a check number as well for tracking purposes. This is just an example, but the the bottom line here is I wanted to bring in a bunch of different types of data, right? So I've got a link relationship, I've got a currency data type, I've got a date data type, I've got a single select field, and I have a number field. I just want to, I just want to make sure that we're looking at all the different types of data and how they work. Now, you'll also notice that we've got an auto number here, and we have an order number that's going to auto generate. So if we did not build a form for this and we had to record this manually, we would do the following. We would click here and you see that the auto number fills out automatically. And then the order number is actually a function of the auto number. So it's taking auto number plus a thousand. So this is just a way to create, you know, a nice number that's in the thousands to track each record. Not really critical for this, but the reason that I've included an auto number here is because this is a dependent field and so is this formula. And so when we go to create this form, you're going to notice that these are not options because these, this is like metadata. This is stuff that's going to happen regardless of what the client name is, the amount received is, the date of payment, all of that stuff. So it's not going to be available to us on our form because of the type of data. So let's go ahead and, and build a form from scratch. So we would click up here and where we have the grid view and the form is actually its own view type. So we're going to select form view. And as soon as we do that, this all gets set up. Now you'll notice that by default, all of the independent field types are automatically in our form. And so that starts again, as I mentioned, the formula that we built and then the auto number, they're not pulling in here, but everything else is the client, the amount received, the date of payment, payment method. Now we can do a couple of things here. First, you know, we can rename this form. So I can call this, this, uh, this is accounts receivable form. We can put a description in here, description example. If we wanted to, and this is a pro plan feature, but if we wanted to, we could add a logo here. We could add a cover image here, whether you're dragging some images from your desktop or you're finding them online, however you're doing that but it, it kind of gussies up the form a little bit. Uh, then importantly, also we can come in and make certain fields required. So in this case, I would want to make sure that when somebody submits this form, we're always capturing the client. 
we're always capturing the amount received, we're always capturing the date, and we're always capturing the payment method. Now, I don't want to make check number required because it's not uh, always going to be a payment that was received by check, right? So this will be non or non required. Um, and then also notice that for this specific uh, type of data, that is the single select field, and this also applies for the multiple select field, I can actually make the decision if I want to see this data as a drop down. So these are the three options, credit card, ACH, or check. Or do I want to make it a list where somebody selects? You can also limit the selection. And so you can turn certain things off and you can say, well, this, you cannot select ACH maybe from this form. Now, of course, I don't want to do that, but just know that you have the option. So that's the high level analysis of that Airtable form. Now, there are, let's go ahead and, and just from this point, check this form out. Oh, before I move on, there are a couple of things that we can do with our form. We can, and these are a lot of pro features, but we can turn off that uh, Airtable branding. We can decide if we want to redirect uh, to uh, a, a new page after the fact. We can, um, you know, all these different options down here. Most of these are, uh, you know, again, part of the pro plan. Uh, you can also receive emails after someone submits a form, etc. Just great ways to get a little bit more functionality out of that form. But with that being said, let's go ahead and check this form out. Now you'll notice this is really just the form itself. Uh, we can drag these things around, we can replace them and move them around. We can remove things from the form if we want to. Of course, I want all of these data points. They're all relevant. Uh, and so that's it. That's it for us. From here, we're gonna to go to open that form. You can also go to share the form and copy this URL. If you're on the pro plan, you can restrict access with a password or to a specific email domain. You can also embed the form on your site. So if you wanted to embed like, your contact form or something like that on your website, you could do that. And that data is gonna go directly into your Airtable database when submitted. But let's, let's imagine that we just wanna open this form and take a look. So again, this is this is a tricky part you know we can't actually access this form this is just the setup of the form when we're inside of this we can only submit to this form when we've clicked that special link that Airtable's created for us so from here you'll see that this is how we set up our form right these this is all the uh, descriptions and everything that we put in there all the fields are required etc now from here we can do a couple things we can add a client we can you know submit an amount we can record a date for a payment. We can select a payment method. And once we're good from here, we'll submit the form. Now, as soon as that's submitted, let's flip back into our Airtable database. And here we are. We see that that came in automatically. Now, this is perfect. This is coming in just as we uh, would have imagined. That auto number is going to instantly tick up one each time. That order, uh, the order number itself uh, is coming in as well. And we have everything coming in as planned. Now, this is a fairly excellent solution, right? The form comes in quickly and easily. And as you just witnessed, it came together in about five minutes. Would have been less than that if I wasn't uh, doing explanations as I went. But there are some things that you would expect from any form software and Airtable misses on a couple of these. So let me address those. All right. Number one is the ability to pre-fill data when you're filling out client or when you're filling out information on the form. So why would you want to do this? Well, let's say that you wanted to send uh, each of your clients their own link that filled out with their own client information. So instead of you filling this form out, maybe your clients are filling this form out for you. And when they go to the form, Let's go ahead and refresh this form. When they go to the form, you want it to already be filled out with their client information. You can absolutely do that in Airtable. This is called pre-filling a form. And in Airtable, they have a great support document on this. So I just go online every time. I never remember the syntax for some reason. And I go to uh, check out the Airtable forum or the Airtable support docs. And you'll see that what you start with is the Airtable URL. So this is the link for your form. You start with this, and then you have to add some special syntax to it. A question mark, then tell it what you want to pre-fill, and then you start putting that pre-fill data in. So let's actually build this for each of our clients. So I'm going to build a unique 
prefill form link. And this is going to be a formula. And I'm going to start off with a concatenate formula. And just to start, I'm just putting a placeholder in here. And I'm going to grab this URL for the form. This is the base URL. This is your starting point. I'm going to grab this URL and put it in here. So now what we have is a is a basically a, a just the same formula every time. So when we add a new contact, then that form will be the same. But that's not what we want. We want this to be unique for each one. So now we need to bring in that Airtable syntax so that this form would prefill. So the first thing we need is a question mark. Then we're going to put in all lowercase the word prefill, then a underscore, and then we have to get the name of the field or fields that we want to prefill. Let's take a look at what those fields are. If I flip back into accounts receivable, I want to prefill the client field. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my clients here and I'm going to adjust this. So again, the first thing we want to do is a question mark, then prefill all lowercase, then an underscore, and then client. Now this is case sensitive, so we need to make sure that we're matching the name of this field exactly. In this case, I have client with a capital C, so I need to make sure I do that in my formula as well. So far, so good. So I've got the form URL, question mark, prefill, underscore, client. Now I need an equal sign. And here's where it's going to be different every time. And I want to tell it the client that you're prefilling is actually the client name that's unique for each record, the full name. And so in here, I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to say full name. Now this is not 100% correct just yet, but let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now you'll see that this is working fairly well, but you see that the end of this is not included with that underline. And that is because inside of my client name, I have a space and I have to account for this in order to get it to uh, populate a URL because URLs, uh, any link cannot have a space in it. So in order to do that, let's get back into this and we're going to wrap the full name with an encode function. There's, whoops, there's an encode URL component that we can apply to this. So I'm just wrapping that full name with that. And what that does is it winds up putting a percent 20 anywhere that there's a space. And that is going to solve the problem for us. So now when I, let's just add another uh, fake client down here. And we'll see that once the formulas had a moment to catch up, that that's all going to be filled out. So now we can present this particular URL to our client. And when the client clicks on this link, as I'm doing now, it will be pre-filled with their information. So that's the first thing that every form uh, software out there that's worth its salt uh, will do. And Airtable does allow you to do that. But that takes us to number two. And number two is hiding fields. And this is a partial hit for Airtable. So what do I mean by hiding fields? Well, when you build a form, sometimes you want to capture data and hide the, the field from the user so that they can't actually see or adjust anything there. That is exactly what we're doing here. So I would not want to create a form in Airtable and then send it to my clients because I don't want my clients to know who my other clients are. And so this kind of breaks down for that very use case because even though this is pre-filled with Gareth's information, Gareth could come in here and X this out and then he gets a list of all the clients again. And if you've got sensitive clients that, you know, in most cases, you probably don't want to make that information public, this kind of breaks down. Normal form softwares like JotForm, Typeform, they will handle this for you automatically. And so there are ways that you can pre-fill a client's information in other form software and then hide that information so that the client can't go back and do this, but it's not possible in Airtable. Now that takes us to the third one. And the third one is where we build conditional logic. Now Airtable forms, unfortunately at this time, don't allow for conditional logic. Again, there are plenty of form softwares out there that do. Conditional logic is when you build rules inside of your form that say, depending on this question, other questions may change or evolve. So for example, if I had the ability to do conditional logic in Airtable, I could remove check number as a potential question and only make it available when somebody says that the payment method was by check. 
And then and only then would the check number field show up on the form. Conditional logic is not uh, allowed or not made available to Airtable forms. But again, Airtable forms are not a form software. It, rather, Airtable is not a form software. It just allows us to build some really quick and easy forms. So those are the three areas where forms, you know, a, an advanced form software needs to check all the boxes. So again, understand the limitations of Airtable forms when you go to build your own forms. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site. So swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.